In plate tectonics, we will be looking at processes that are changing Earth's surficial appearance, primarily the position of continents and the pervasiveness of ocean basins through time. So the first thing that we're going to look at with plate tectonics is the different types of plate boundaries that exist. The first type of boundary is convergent, and in a convergent plate boundary we have two pieces of crust that are coming together or colliding. Now this is relative motion, so relatively they are colliding with each other, but in terms of absolute motion they could be going in the same direction. So think of the analogy of two cars on a highway, both traveling in the same direction, but the car that's behind is going at a faster speed. If it doesn't change lanes, what's going to happen? It's going to rear end or collide with the car in front of it, which is a convergent relative motion, even though they're both going in that same absolute direction. So when we look at convergent plate boundaries, there are different sets within this type. On this image, we have an oceanic continental convergence, meaning one piece of crust is oceanic with a mafic composition. The other piece of crust on the other side of the boundary is continental with a more felsic composition. When they collide, the oceanic crust subducts or goes underneath the continental crust because it is more dense. So that's one very important thing you should know about the controls of the interaction of the plates at a boundary. The primary control with how they interact in terms of overriding or subducting is density. Here we see that we do produce a melt from dehydration melting. Uh, minerals in the subducting slab give off water. Water decreases the melting point of silicate minerals. And then uh, the melt is produced and we have volcanic activity on the overlying crust. The second image over here is looking at oceanic-oceanic convergence. Here we have two pieces of oceanic crust. Again, we get subduction, dehydration melting, and a volcanic island arc forms on the overriding piece of oceanic crust. Now, in the first example, it makes sense that the oceanic crust is more dense because the mineral composition, as compared to the felsic crust, in the second example over here, we have two pieces of ocean crust that have, for relative purposes, let's say the same composition. So the minerals are not creating the density difference. What's creating a difference in the densities is the age. The older crust has cooled more and therefore become more dense than the younger crust, which still has some of the heat from when it was a magma, uh, and it because of that heat is less dense and sits on the overriding as the overriding plate. There is a third type of convergent boundary that I do not have an image for, uh, but for that you're looking at continental-continental convergence. And the important thing to know about continental-continental convergence is that continental crust cannot subduct. So when two continental plates converge, uh, they do not subduct, they smash upwards and they make a little bit of a root downwards, uh, forming folded mountain belts like the Himalayas. So you should go ahead and try to give that an illustration or drawing in your pre-lab activity for this topic. The second type of plate boundary we have is divergent. And at a divergent plate boundary, we have two plates that are pulling away from each other. Now again, this is relative motion. They could be going in the same direction at different speeds, uh, but this time, using our car analogy, the car in front is going faster than the car that's behind. So the two cars, even though they're going in the same direction, are pulling away from each other in a relative sense. In this image, we have a divergent boundary forming between two pieces of continental crust. So we get what we often call a rift valley that as the two plates pull apart, you get a thinning with a lot of normal faults. So sort of, we call them horse and grabbins falling into the rift valley we see here. More common for divergent boundaries are where two pieces of ocean crust are diverging. 
you get what's called a mid-ocean ridge that you could find in the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian Ocean, all over the planet. Here we have seafloor spreading, so the ocean is growing and getting larger as the two pieces of ocean crust pull apart. The melt that produces rock at the mid-ocean ridge is created by decompression melting. So mantle material is convecting, it's moving around uh, in the uh, asthenosphere below the lithosphere. And as it comes up in the upwelling that's below our mid-ocean ridge, it decreases, it experiences a decrease of pressure, uh, which is a factor in the state of a material, solid, liquid, or gas. And since the pressure decreases, the temperature is high enough with that decreased pressure that the material turns from a solid to a liquid to produce the melt. The third type of plate boundary that exists in plate tectonics is a transform plate boundary. In a transform plate boundary, you do not have pulling apart or pushing together. Instead, along the margin, the plate boundary itself, you have one plate sliding along the other. So, you know, I often make a joke that if I ever become a DJ, I'm going to be DJ transform, because if we take our hands and do a transform motion, it's like this, one plate sliding next to the other, which of course is how a DJ scratches records. Uh, but when we look for transform plate boundaries on the planet, here we have a mid-ocean ridge, and we can see that that divergent plate boundary, that mid-ocean ridge, is cut across and sort of broken into little sections that are offset from each other. Each of those lines that's cutting across the mid-ocean ridge is a transform plate boundary. So most often transform plate boundaries are associated with divergent boundaries on the surface. And the reason for this is that at a divergent plate boundary, the entire plate is not pulling away from the other plate at the same rate. So you'll have areas that want to pull faster than others within the same plate. And in order to do that, think if my arm, this part down here, wanted to move faster than this part up here, what has to happen to my arm in the middle? It has to snap. And that would be the transform plate boundary that would allow the two different rates of motion along that boundary. So these are the plate boundaries that you should be familiar with for a plate tectonics lab in an intro geology course.